Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for coming out to the uh, Toyota Hybrid World Tour today. I'm Casey Kiramoto. I work out of Toyota Motor Corporation in Japan. I handle the uh, um, global communications, so anything PR, communications, um, that has to do with outside of Japan, I'm involved. Um, today, I'd like to give you all a brief rundown on what the hybrid market looks like in Japan. Um, Japan is unique uh, in that uh, it was the first market in the world to really embrace hybrids. Um, of course, it didn't happen overnight. Um, it was quite a long process. Um, back in 1997, um, Toyota launched not only the Prius, but also the uh, Coaster hybrid minibus. Um, and of course, uh, these, of course, especially with the Prius, um, this was a great milestone for Toyota. Um, but it was not only uh, because of the astounding support that we received from our customers in Japan, um, that, but uh, that, uh, we were, that we were actually able to succeed and we were able to get to where we are today. Um, the initial production, actually, for the first generation Prius uh, was just 1,000 units a month. Um, as soon after that, uh, just as Bob said, and I think uh, uh, Bart said, the same thing happened in Japan. We were flooded with orders. Um, people had to wait about six months to uh, get their Prius. Um, we uh, later doubled the production to about 2,000 units a month. Um, and Uchimada san would say that, Ogisa san would probably say that too, but uh, we were really taken by surprise by just how forward looking um, the consumers or customers in Japan were about environmental issues. The uh, first generation Prius um, went on to sell an average of 12,000 units a year um, during its um, model life cycle. Um, so taking what we learned from the launch of the first Prius, we launched the second generation in 2003. Vastly improved environmental, driving performance, whatnot. Uh, it uh, also featured the, uh, the, the first iteration of this uh, iconic uh, triangular wedge shape that, uh, that has come to symbolize the Prius um, and perhaps even hybrid vehicles as a whole. After launch, um, again, it became clear to us that uh, customers were, again, way ahead of us. Our initial monthly sales plan for this one was a, a, what we thought was generous, 3,000 units a month. Um, that was, again, shattered by orders of over uh, 17,500 units in the first month. Again, five times more than what we expected. So then the third generation Prius. Um, this was launched in 2009, as many of you know. Uh, they say that the third time's a charm, and well, indeed, um, that was the case here. Uh, right off the bat, <laughs> this time uh, it, it, we added another zero. Um, we received 180,000 orders in the first month for this one right here. That was an all-time high uh, in Japan, and it still stands today. Um, part of the reason for the sales boom, um, it did coincide with the, what, what, what's called the uh, scrap incentives and the eco-car subsidies at the time. Um, for example, uh, a Prius would be eligible for more or less around $5,000, um, depending on how you calculate the currency, um, in scrap incentives or subsidies and, and tax breaks combined. Um, for the next uh, four years, from 2009 to uh, 2012, this Prius uh, was the best-selling car in Japan. What would be the car that would be able to uh, dethrone it? Um, the Prius C, what you call here, or what we call the Aqua, uh, that was the car. Uh, in 2003, I think, uh, 2013, um, it's leading the, the figures. Um, at this point, uh, it's, I think it's pretty safe to say that, uh, that hybrids are now mainstream in the Japanese market. Just to uh, briefly overview the, the current uh, state of the hybrid market in Japan. So in Japan, after the launch of the first Prius, we expanded our uh, lineup 
Uh, we started, I think, with the uh, Estima Hybrid and the, the Crown uh, Mild Hybrid. That was back in 2001. Uh, a few years after that, uh, Lexus was launched. And then uh, in 2006, uh, the GS uh, started the rollout of the hybrid models for the, uh, for the Lexus brand. Eventually, as you see here, the uh, hybrid lineup would uh, grow to include the LS, RX, CT, and the HS. So in Japan, all in all, we have 17 models in, in the hybrid market, and, uh, so, and that is, of course, uh, the largest and uh, most diverse lineup of hybrid vehicles in the world. Um, our hybrids, in terms of sales, um, started out pretty modestly with uh, 18,000 uh, unit sales in 1998, because that was when the first Prius was sold in earnest for a full year. Uh, and then in 2008, you, we saw it breaking the 100,000 mark. Uh, momentum continued. And then with the what you call the Prius C or the, the Aqua and the Prius V or the Alpha, that uh, continued on with uh, strong demand and uh, uh, helped propel sales around uh, 700,000. I think it was like 680,000 or so in 2012. So that was last year. Um, of course, the more hybrids we sell, uh, the big, bigger share of our sales they occupy. Um, in 2000, well, pretty easy to figure, but uh, only 1% of our sales in Japan were hybrids. And in uh, 2009, we went to 20. And last year, 40% of our cars that we sell in the Japanese market are hybrids. Uh, now, Toyota uh, dominates the hybrid market in Japan. Um, with an estimated 80% share. Uh, we, I say estimated because in, in the Japanese uh, uh, market, the, 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 there are no official figures that are actually announced uh, that just for hybrids. So we don't really know, but according to some of the reports that, uh, that uh, you write, um, we estimate that, uh, that we're at about 80%. Um, so now let's uh, take a, a brief look at the current um, regulatory or, or incentive situation around hybrids. Um, as you know, in, Jap uh, in Japan, uh, there, there are no cafe-like uh, fuel economy regulations um, as you have in the U.S., um, nothing like in Europe. Um, uh, and, and I think I touched upon it before, but there, are, uh, there were significant uh, uh, government incentives uh, for the purchase of eco cars like the Prius, uh, but I think that ended uh, a year ago or so. Now, however, the so-called what we call the green uh, car tax breaks, they're, they're still there. And so that would exempt eco car buyers from a portion of what we call the vehicle acquisition and, uh, and vehicle weight taxes. We don't really want to get too deep into that. It's very complicated. But anyhow, um, so even now, uh, you can get around uh, $1,500, uh, I would say, for, for buying a Prius. So putting all this together, how do we see the future in terms of hybrid market in Japan? Um, now with current trends, as they are, uh, we don't really see any reason for hybrids to stop growing or increasing in Japan. The popularity of hybrids in Japan as I just told you, $1,500, okay, not small, but not, not really big. Um, so it just can't really be explained just with incentives or lower taxes or whatnot. Um, as you know, gasoline prices are extremely high, um, more or less about twi twice levels of that you have here. Um, other market conditions, um, I think Bart talked about uh, um, urbanization. Well. In many parts of Japan, we're really urbanized, and <laughs> so, so hybrids do well in, in, in those kind of road conditions. Um, so so the, these are really big factors, and so, so it's not just the, the environment um, part, but that, that's what really uh, attracts the, uh, the customers. Now, of course, hybrids, they're, they're not the only way to uh, improve fuel economy. Um, you, you know, you've, it's probably all in your reports, but uh, many automakers, uh, including we, we are, but uh, um, Toyota are also continuing to develop, uh, of course, non-hybrid solutions for uh, including fuel economy, 
you know, downsizing smaller, more fuel efficient uh, uh, engines, uh, gasoline engines or whatnot. Um, other makers, um, we have in our market what we call the mini vehicle segment. Um, th these are vehicles under 660 cubic centimeters, so pretty small. Um, companies like Daihatsu they, they've, uh, or Suzuki, they've been launching uh, um, non-hybrid mini vehicles that rate over 30 kilometers per liter and if, uh, in the government and Japanese standards. With, um, the Prius, I think it's at 32.6. So um, uh, if you go over 30%, 30 kilometers per liter, that, that's pretty high. Um, so again, hybrids are not the only solution in, in improving fuel economy. Um, but the, uh, and we're sure the, the competition will definitely heat up um, going forward. But uh, uh, again, someone talked about this as well, but one great advantage that uh, hybrids have is that, uh, again, it not only provides great fuel economy, low emissions, but also the, the ride, the drive, the, the cabin space, it's a real car. Um, and so with that, uh, I, I really think uh, that, uh, that hybrids and the popularity of it um, will only continue to grow in the uh, Japanese market. Um, so with that, uh, thank you very much, and I would next like to call upon, ah, there you are, Tom.